that, well, okay, I mean, I can't speak for God, but from my understanding is that when the prophet died, the Quran was already fully revealed and it was already memorized and it was most like more than likely already fully written down. Not, it's not like it was just one document. I'm sure all of the all of the companions of the prophet and everyone must have had some some or if not fully completed Qurans, if not memorized verses. And the only argument I can make for that is when you look at a Quran that was, you know, 650 AD and you look at a Quran today, it's the exact word no, for word. Not. Oh, so, 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 wait, wait, to add to that. So, sure. so, okay, the, the one paper, that, that one pa the paper was Eden, okay, because it says a paper, I wasn't saying papers. So the paper was Eden, but you were saying that they were already more written down. So how many Qurans do you have? I'm not saying it's new verses written. I'm just saying people make just like how there's probably millions of Qurans printed out and millions of Bibles and millions of Torahs in all different languages. Just because, you know, let's say it wasn't even a sheep that day. Let's say the house burnt and caught on fire and it burnt the holy book. And now 500 verses were it doesn't mean that these are 500 new verses that were never mentioned or spoken from the prophet. That's the case. That's what happened. Ahmed. It literally says in that hadith that the sheep ate it and after that the verses of stoning were lost nobody remembered them so those verses out of the quran just went poof disappeared if you that compare that sense. to what happened with the bible moses had the literally had god the holy spirit guiding him in what to write and what to say within the within the five books and those books were contained within the ark of the covenant until about 700 bc meaning all of the um, Torahs and the, uh, 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 well, actually, all of the Torahs up until contained in the original manner until the Ark of the Covenant was lost during a war. And that means they had 700 years, so, sorry, five, 400 years until about the, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is between 300 BC and 50 BC, which, which scholars put it at. Uh, but even if you say, okay, right in the middle, they had about five to six hundred years to corrupt a book that's been written down probably by that time thousands of times and people would have to go through the length of changing all of the other manuscripts changing every single person who memorized the torah because people actually did people memorized the whole entire torah and they would have to change the minds of those people in able to get away with changing even one word or one letter within the torah so that means that means it just didn't happen like there's you have to jump through so many logical boundaries so many just just loopholes in order to say it because they had because we have the Dead Sea Scrolls which say the same thing as the Torahs we have today we had the the original manuscripts the very first manuscripts written by Moses of the Torah up until around 700 600 BC and they had about 400 ish years 500 ish years to corrupt that, but there was already thousands of written copies outside of the Ark of the Covenant, which would have been the exact same within the Ark of the Covenant the, as the originals. So they couldn't have changed it at all during that time because there was thousands of copies already uh, 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 written down and the rabbis would have made sure that none of those were lost or changed. And the Septuagint, again, is another uh, 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 another bit of um, writing we can go to, which affirms the Torah we have today as well which is from around 300, I think, or 200 BC. But if you believe that none of the words of God were ever altered or corrupted or forgotten, then why would there ever be a need to have so many prophets sent down? I already explained that, remember? Jesus, Jesus, forgot the, Jesus forgot the season when he ate the fruit. But, but since Muhammad forgot something, Muhammad... Hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. So you're not going to come up here, uh, derail the conversation... <clears throat> with, uh, and it's the same conversation, JC, JC, so, so, uh, how is it a silly so, argument? It's a, one, it's a known, one, it's a known, one second, it's a known one second, fact. my man, you need to chill out and slow your roll. JC had an amazing argument. Read the room. Yeah, it's an amazing argument. Read the they room. <laughs> Read the room. So, so Ahmed, remember yeah. what I, you asked this question earlier. Do you remember what I said? Why many prophets were brought? I honestly forgot. I don't remember what it That's was about. Okay. So remember, we said that the people continued in rebellion, they continued in rebellion, sure. and that yeah. God's revelation is parsed out over through time, and, you know, can't handle everything at once, multiple prophets yeah. come in time. Sure. Continue okay, yeah, I do remember the, that part. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. you saying that now. All right, cool. So wouldn't, so wouldn't the act of rebellion also be considered altering manuscripts and changing and writing different claims that 
what God said to not that's be not, with. That's not part of the history. So then what, what, what would it be like, for example, idol worshiping, right? That was considered a rebellion of God, right? Yeah, but that's not a corruption of scripture. Well, I feel like people who say they follow God, they wouldn't do things that go against it. So unless they feel like it's okay to worship an idol, then they can't call themselves like a believer or a follower of a prophet. Yeah, they would, they would be hypocrites. They, they would so, be hypocrites. Exactly. You just said it. What about people who sin? People who sin don't follow God. You just you just said it. All of the other all said it. All of the other all of the other prophets, their their words, Moses, Abraham, their their word was given, but Jesus, Jesus peace be upon him, was the only prophet that people they took his word and they they extended his words and call, started who, calling who, him God. Who, wait, who yeah, said that? Yeah, because it says that wait, there wait, was Wait, wait, no, 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 no. Don't who said that? The the, the, the people of Moses no, 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 think no. he you, was God. You said you said that I just made the point. Who said that uh they they took all the prophets' words except Jesus? They stretched it out to say things he didn't say. Who said that? Where'd you get that? From? I'm saying that. Oh, but you said that we said that. Yeah, the, the Christians, the Christians okay, right, say that. So, so all right. So there's no there's no mention there's no mention there's no mention there's no mention says things and forgets what he says. You're making you're making a statement that's not true. Nobody said that. Nobody There's said a, that. The, and you make the Christians, the, Christ, the Christians no, no, no. didn't say so, it today. So we, did, we didn't even say that, firstly. Secondly, the Christians, the Christians just, don't say Jesus is God. If you would just God. humble yourself, if you would just humble yourself, and if you want to learn, then you can stay up here. But if you don't, you can go. Nobody's forcing you to stay. Yeah. So what, what do you, I'm what's here, your point, right? What's your talk. point? Ahmed was, so quiet, Ahmed was so having a beautiful conversation with us, and what, he was being respectful. He was staying on point. And, and you're derailing the conversation. You're being pretty rude because you're interrupting all the time. So please be respectful and actually stay on topic and don't bring up claims that nobody here made at all. All right. So the history of the scriptures, nowhere in the history of the scriptures were they corrupted. So this is why even according to the Quran, the Quran sources, Islamic sources, the Hadiths, what Muslims say does not match what the Quran and the Sunnah and the other, you know, uh, sources, it doesn't match what we read. So you got to stop saying this stuff, bro. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to because I mean, the, the, re the reason why this argument came up was that they were talking about how because a sheep or a lamb ate a written down verse, they're saying that that verse was lost. And I'm not sure if maybe they're referring to as they don't know which verse the sheep ate. Like they're kind of catching no, we, we do know that we do know the verse that the sheep ate. It ate the verse of stoning and 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 you do not find this in the Quran anymore. Uh, honestly, I know what you guys are talking about. I seen I think David Wood or one of these guys, these Christians were talking. It was already debunked. I've got to pull up the video. Uh, yeah, there, the there, was no, video. there was no there was no there was no verse. There was no verse of stoning. But, but wait, 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 wait. you, you just said that there's no verse of stoning. There was there was no 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 verse of stoning. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean of stoning? You don't do you understand that it even applies in Sharia? If there's a, oh, a woman, can, if there's a woman, a woman like caught being an adulteress, she should be stoned under the Sharia law. Oh, so what do you mean by that? Hold up. Give me a second. I'm coming back. I'll pull up the video right now because that, this was this so was this, 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 well, this, 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 this whole thing that whole thing was already debunked. But hold up. Give me one. Wait, so, you can I ask you something, Prince? You're Prince, gonna pull up you, the video. Convert? So while while he's, he's pulling up this video, I want to just re I want to make sure that he knows what he needs to go search so he doesn't come back wasting our time. Go and find the video that says that there was the forgotten verse, verse. The forgotten stone. verses of the Quran. No, 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 no. Say that there's that it says that there's no verse of stone. There was never a verse of stone. That's what you need to bring. Okay, okay I got you. Not okay. that it's abrogated. I know, exa I know exactly what you're saying. All right, good. Okay. Wait, so there are forgotten verses of the Quran? There are no. That's that's exactly the point I'm you trying to make. You just said that. You're you're, li you're lying. You're but you just said your, that. Your hadith there, said there, 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 there were no forgotten. Well, hang on. Really? I, said, yeah, I, think, is a liar. I know the question he wants to ask is because J JC the, is JC is just pulling. She's just rambling, rambling, I'm rambling. Wait, 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 Prince, Prince, are you a convert to Islam? I am not a religion. Yes. Oh my days. But hang on, yes. I want to go back to the question that the lady asked. So <clears throat> she said that a sheep ate a verse that no one knows. But then you were bringing up how you said, "Well, do we know the verse that the sheep ate it was about stoning and for for adultery?" Is that correct? 
I didn't make that. I said that. You said that. Yeah, you said that. I said, yeah, I didn't, no, no, let me let me let me say what I said. Stop putting words in my mouth. I said that a tame sheep came and ate the paper. That's what yeah. I said. And then and then you were basically saying that that's a verse that was lost in nose. I and didn't say that. I just said a tame sheep came and ate the Quran. They said yeah, like, they that, said it was about they said it was about so the, the, stone verse, in that it was the verse. The verse is gone now. It's not in the I Quran. Didn't even, oh. Yeah, but so this, like, how would you know that the verse was about stoning? If it was the hadith lost. says it, the hadith says so wait, so, but how, could, how, how could someone <laughs> it's, know? It's funny. So, but how Mufti, could the hadith... Mufti Kafir, Mufti because, Kafir, uh, so, 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 yeah, let me put it on the screen. Let me put it on the screen to, yeah. to end this discussion because I think it's 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 derailing everything a little bit by by not having the sources on the screen. Let me let, let me just <clears throat> in the meantime, are we are we are we clear now? At least are we clear that from the Islamic sources? The Torah and the Gospel were not corrupted. Are we at least clear on that right now? And yeah, no, I agree. In mind, when the way they're being sp spoken about, no, in the I, book, the the written books that existed during Muhammad's time that the Jews and Christians had, that they were reading, that they were following, that they're preaching from, that those books were not corrupted according to Islamic sources. Are we? There were still some. There were still some. There were still some words. Hold from on, God. hold on. Let so, Ahmed speak. I I still disagree because my argument is that the way Muhammad is answering the question, he's referring to back then, like the original Torah, see, the original and, 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 and this is where Christ. and and this is where usually, man, with these conversations, there's no um, the, the Muslim has to go with what they come up with in their head and in their interpretations instead yeah. of the text and what the text says. So are you saying well, Muhammad well, didn't believe good, in the Bible? So you're, by, this, what, by, these stand, by these standards, you're saying Muhammad didn't believe in the Bible. He didn't believe in Isa before him. By these so Isa, by these, Isa by was these, before him? By these, by, these, by these standards, you're saying, <laughs> oh, oh, he put he pulled up the Torah and he believed in the Torah's words and he believed in the prophet, prophet Musa, Moses. So that's your point you're making. As, well, no. yes, those, did, 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 those did books, Muhammad submit to the kosher to, oh, diet? Well, well, yeah, yeah. Those you know what's so funny? You know what's so funny? Hold on, hold on, guys. According to your point, Muhammad was a liar when he said that he believed in the Torah. According to your point, Allah is a liar when he says that the Torah and the gospel are intact that has guidance in it. Uh, Allah is a liar when he says that none can change his words. Uh, you're saying, well, actually, no, people can actually change your words, Allah. D don't, don't say that. Uh, so when it comes to the text, the text says one thing, you say another, both of you, all Muslims, y'all say another, and you guys want us to follow you instead of you guys adhering to what your text says. This is the difficult part in being like, this position forces you to go against what your Quran says, against what your Hadith says, and you got to just make up your interpretations. Well, I don't think it's too crazy for me to have that interpretation because it clearly looks like in that one that you brought up where it says that he's talking about when the Jews brought him the Torah, he's saying that he believed in that. And that's not a crazy thing that a Muslim. Yeah, exactly. that You're right. Those were, those, were also, those, were also, those were also the words. Ahmed, hold on, excuse me. Excuse me. Ahmed. Yeah, I don't I, I don't get why you're going back to that when you saw the flaw in that point and you admitted like, yeah, that wouldn't make sense because, it, again, we'll restate it. If your point is true that he's talking about, he used to believe in it, then it follows because he says, I used to believe in you and the one who revealed you, meaning he does not re believe in the Torah anymore, nor in the one who revealed the Torah anymore. Yeah, because that Torah at this point is no longer okay, the so word he doesn't of God. believe in it's Allah just like anymore. it's just like it's just like wait, the wait, 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 wait. it's just like so it's like whoa, 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 whoa. So the word so he of doesn't God believe is... so he doesn't believe in, in in Allah anymore. That's not what he's saying. It's just like no, the Old Testament. That, the oh, humans oh, corrupted oh, it. And that that's so, Torah so that he's saying prophet? so he's saying the word of the word of God is not eternal. Basically, so that's the Quran. It's not eternal. Then wait, wait, just let him just stick here. No, so can I can I say can I say can I can I say this one point? Everybody focus. The Quran was brought down. The Quran was brought down for. So Ahmed, yeah, he says you're saying that it means that he used to believe in it, doesn't anymore. Correct? That's what your interpretation is. Even yeah, though you said I'm, that was wrong, yeah, but now you're going back to that. I'm imagining if a Jew brought no, me. No, it's, it's just yes. You got. You got to explain it. You got to re-explain. I know what you're saying. You're okay. going back to that reasoning. Yeah, that's 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 what I'm I'm putting my place okay. in Muhammad's position. Okay, so are you okay. saying okay. that in Muhammad's position that he's saying that he doesn't believe in Allah anymore? No, I'm saying he doesn't believe in that specific Torah. Logic, well, logic. Says, guess what? I don't believe. So he says, "I believed in you, 
and in the one who revealed you. Yeah, past tense. Okay, past tense. So he doesn't believe in Allah anymore then, right? He used to believe in Allah, but he doesn't anymore. No, he believed in the message that Abraham said, and he believed in the Torah that was written at the time that Abraham spoke. But he to doesn't anymore, Lord. correct? No, because after all this time, okay. It's so if he doesn't believe in it anymore, yeah. He also, in that same phrase, in the same breath, sure. says, "And the one who revealed you." So he didn't. He be, he used to believe in the one who revealed it, but doesn't anymore now, correct? Well, when you mean believe him, believe in him as the prophet? I'm not. I'm sure he still believes. My, 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 my friend, my friend, my friend. I just uh, logic, who, who, logic. Who, who, I just checked with an Arabic Torah? speaker. I just checked with an Arabic speaker, and it actually says believe. It doesn't say believed. But even uh, even if <laughs> even if it doesn't matter, even if like I'm 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 showing because earlier he saw the flaw in this, but now he has to go back to that interpretation for some reason. I I, I don't know why Muslims do this, but he's doing it. He, I, you know, it's the general thing to do. So we're here. Well, I mean, as a Muslim, I do believe in the word of Jesus. I believe in the word no, of that's Moses. Not, that's not the, the question, Abraham. man. Like, I, I, my gosh, that's not the question. Sure. You said that according to that hadith, Muhammad used to believe in the Torah. He used to okay. believe it. He doesn't believe it anymore. Then, then in the same me, breath I, of that hadith, that same breath, he says, and the one who revealed you. So who's the one who revealed the Torah? Okay. So a Abraham revealed the Torah. I guess let me. No, 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 Abraham revealed the Torah. Not Abraham. It was himself. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me, let me clear. Okay, I'll give you. I I'll give you a clear answer. Who, who revealed the Torah, bro? I, I, I don't know. I don't know who revealed the Torah. Okay, can somebody, <laughs> can somebody read chapter three, verse three for me? <sighs> Yeah, let me let me let me read it. <laughs> I wonder, uh, logic. I wonder if um, I wonder if Muhammad uh, submitted to the kosher diet because they weren't allowed to eat camel and shellfish. So does that mean that you know in Islam they eat camel burgers on like Ramadan? So I wonder if like Muhammad started eating camels as well after. Well, it's part of the Quran, so. So uh, another, Surah another three thing. verse, Surah three verse three says, "He has revealed to you, O Prophet, the book in with truth." Comparing what came before it, as he revealed the Torah and the gospel. Who? Who revealed the Torah and the gospel? Allah. Okay. Ahmed, who revealed the Torah? Okay, God, but through a prophet. The prophet spoke to, to Abraham. No problem, but the prophet didn't reveal it. God revealed it, right? Okay, well, that, that's like me saying, okay, when I say Muhammad revealed the message of God, that's, I'm not saying... You can't say that, okay. you can't say Muhammad yeah, I'm saying God. God obviously spoke through Muhammad. It's the word of yeah, God. So, that's, right, I'm so referring Muhammad to... recited the message but God is the one who revealed it. Okay. Okay. So then, okay, then that's just a misunderstanding. Yes, I do yes, agree okay. with that. Yeah, right, God beautiful, obviously beautiful. sent all the message through all the prophets. I do beautiful. agree with that. Beautiful. Now, so are you saying now, according to your logic, this is what you're saying, that Muhammad used to believe in the Torah, does not believe in it anymore, and he used to believe in Allah, does not believe in Allah anymore? No, I would say he does believe in Abraham, but he doesn't believe in the Torah now it, at that it's time. Still Moses, Again, brother. It's still going, Moses. Going with your logic, I believed in thee, the, the Torah, talking about the Torah, and the one who revealed you. According to your logic, he used to believe in the Torah, not anymore now. He used to believe in Allah, not anymore now. Do you see the problem? Yeah, that is definitely a problem. So I guess I can't use you can't that, use that logic. argument. That's, yeah, that's terrible reasoning. But I will, but I definitely will say that Muhammad definitely believed in the pra the past prophet Abraham for sure. That's no problem, but he's talking about okay. we're talking about the Torah in his time. He said that he believed in it. It's it's, it's, it's just it's as simple as that, Ahmed. Why why fight against that when your well, text because, literally because, says it? Listen, because here's the thing: there's a difference between hadith and Quran, and I know there's certain hadith. The Quran that are sahih. says it. The Quran says it, bro. Yeah, but no, that specific thing, that was a hadith, not a Quran. I know it in says, Quran, why do they come to you when they have the Torah in which Allah's judgment is in it? Yeah, and I answered that by saying it's because he's trying to, you know, humor them and make them critically it's think. It's not like, humor if he tells them that they have to judge by their books or else they're disbelievers. Well, yeah, imagine if you as a Christian came to me, hey, man, so I just committed adultery. What should I do? Like, listen, I'm a Muslim, bro. Go. Go ask what Jesus would go read okay, your Bible. Good. So Let's if a polytheist came to Muhammad and said, I committed adultery or this person committed adultery, what should we do? What would Muhammad's response be to the polytheist? I mean, I can't speak, but I would assume like 
listen, you're a poly polytheist. Go ask one of your multiple gods what you think is good. If you're seeking guidance, can you show me anywhere in the Quran? No, no, I'm not allowed you, any ruling up. for the polytheist to follow no, 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 their own. Religion? I, don't, I don't know. I, you asked my own personal opinion. What okay. would Muhammad okay. say? Okay. I don't know. Okay. So the answer to that is Muhammad will force them to follow the Quran. That's what well, that's I the wouldn't ruling. believe. No, no, because one thing I do know is that there's a, a verse in the Quran that's saying reli the religion is has no compulsion. That's no, but he composed the polytheist into the religion. Where's the, 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 the background of the the background of the no compulsion in religion was on the opposite end for the parents to not um, to not be able to keep their kids from converting to Islam. That's the background of that verse, not the other way around. Now, so if, if when it comes to this, Islam? When, yes, yes. When it comes to this, you have the, for example, oh, goodness, bro. When the polytheists used to do their prayers to their gods and do their practices to their idols, were they allowed to do this or was Muhammad warning them against this and saying they shouldn't do it or else they're going to go to hell? About the reverse in the Quran about no compulsion in the religion. That's not what I asked. I'm sorry, then repeat. I misunderstood. Say it again, the question. Were the polytheists allowed to follow their own rules and their religion? I'm not 100% certain. I don't know. The answer I would assume, is no. no. The answer is no. Assume. Yeah, if they're living under like the islamic rule at the time uh -huh. then i would feel like they have to abide by the rules in that exactly now what about jews and christians under islamic rule are jews and christians able to keep their own uh, abide by their own religion i I'd, I'd assume so i believe the so answer, that the answer okay. is yes yeah. why is that why are the jews and christians able to keep their religion and their laws as opposed to the polytheists what's the difference because I guess shirk was a very high crime, and although all the other Abrahamic religions did believe in one God at the time, that's why I f that's, I'm assuming that's why they would allow the Christians and the Jews amongst each other to coexist. Because and, they had the because supposedly they had the same God, and their God yeah. gave them revelation, right? And it was just a misunderstanding, and eventually with time, oh, they come over to the right side. So, that, the, so, the, so the polytheists did not have revelation from God, while the Jews and the Christians did. Correct. I would, I would believe so. That does make sense. Yeah. Okay. So the Jews and the Christians were supposed to follow their scriptures because it was revelation from God. While the polytheists, they were not allowed to follow their own religion because it was not revelation from God. So they had to follow the Quran now because Muhammad was sent to them. He was sent to the Arabian people, right? Sure. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're supposed to follow the, the Quran now. In Mecca, yeah. yes. Now, so when you have 43, 543, why talking about talking to Muhammad about the Jews? Why do they come to you when they have the Torah, which Allah's judgment is in? It's not because he's humoring them. It's because they actually have God's judgment and revelation that they have to abide by or else they're disbelievers. They're hypocrites. You understand the point? Yeah, I do. Okay. However, so, it, however, well, the reason why I also bring up the argument, because I do know one specific story about the uh, the prophet Yusuf, which would be Joseph and I guess Christianity. And I remember one particular story when he was traveling in the desert, he came amongst a village and as he's a messenger of God and they were very stern, stubborn people. He knew he couldn't just come out of the women and say, only follow one God. Don't do this. Don't do that. Like he knew he wasn't going to convey them over. So I do remember this particular scenario when they were all looking up into the sky and they were worshiping stars. He would then point out like, okay, this star right here, I'm going to follow this star because it's the biggest, it's the brightest, it's the most powerful. And then that star twinkled away and then he immediately went to, wait a minute, I'm going to follow this moon right here. This moon, it's so bright, it's the biggest thing in the sky. I'm going to worship this moon. This is my God. And then the moon slowly started to come down and then it disappeared. It kind of made the people critically think and like, wait a minute, it doesn't make sense to worship the stars, the moon, the sun. I need to worship something that's above all of this. And that's kind of how Joseph or, or Yusuf at the time conveyed those people to believe in under one God. I'm, I'm just making the assumption, the interpretation, the way Muhammad, the prophet, is trying to make these Jews critically think, listen, if you don't believe that I am the messenger of the God, yet you take my word so highly, you seek my advice, you seek my opinion, why would you seek my advice and opinion on this one simple thing when I'm giving you the advice and opinion on something much greater? So go back to your book, which you swear is the word of God, and 
go use that for advice. Don't come to me where I'm saying, you know, that's just my opinion. I can't put words in the Muhammad's, but that's just how I would interpret it to make my religion seem correct. That's how I would want to view it as a Muslim. That's yeah. Just so what, what you're showing is, is that your interpretation, you have to make up stuff and then, and come up and imagine things and instead of going with the actual text. And so that's what is, uh, this is what, uh, you know, this is what you have to do as a Muslim, as you just said, this is what you have to do as a Muslim. In order to make your position seem correct, you have to interpret it in a way even that goes against what the text says. So, I mean, you could do that all you want. That's, you know, that's your prerogative. But um, uh, just just understand that that's not uh, an, an honest or intellectually honest or scripturally honest approach to, to have these discussions, bro. So the that's, all I'm, that's all I got me... to say, because, you know, at this point, we can go over the plain text as much as we want. We can show you the scripture as much as we want, but as you just acknowledge and admit it, you want your view to be correct. And so you're going to interpret anything in order to try to match what you believe to make your, your position true. Do not do that as well. There's nothing you can do with that except say, well, God bless you, man. And I hope that God guides you. But There's nothing you we can do with that. But wouldn't you as a Christian do the same thing? No. So <laughs> we use scripture and we use church fathers. We use everything, history, science, everything factual to back us up. You know, we don't use our imagination, as you said, uh, to make the text work for us. We use our own text to prove our text. So if you bring up a contradiction, we will use history, we'll use scripture, we'll use everything that we've got to clear it up. We're not gonna go ahead and say, oh, well, we have to use our imagination here. Like for example, with Jesus being God, we're not gonna say, oh, we have to use our imagination to imagine that the Bible says Jesus is God. We're gonna go through the Old Testament and the New Testament where it clearly complies with the ideology and clearly clarifies as a fact that Jesus is indeed God. We're not going to use our imagination. We're not going to use any sort of tactic to do that. We're going to use our own scripture. We're going to use fact-based things. We're not going to do what you're doing right now because it's it's merely intellectually dishonest. And I don't believe that's 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 correct to do within a discussion such as this. Well, I mean, you guys were asking me what I thought the prophet was doing. You're kind of asking me for my opinion. So I would like uh, to have this. Let's have, let's, well, how about, Let's no. try and use just the Quran and the Bible as like, because I mean, I'm not an expert in Hadith. And even though Hadith isn't uh, the word of God, but I believe the Quran is, there's really not much ways I can interpret the Quran. So that's why I kind of brought what's like the strongest evidence where I can't literally interpret, where I'd be looking like a fool if I were to try and twist the words the other way. That's why I say like, what's the strongest evidence? that the Quran is corrupt in your opinion. And then you bring me the strongest evidence that the Bible is correct. And that's why, you know, cause Hadith, it's all about, oh, I'm interpreting how someone said, I don't want to interpret. I want something that's clear and concise that I really can't debate and argue about. That's, that's, that's fine, that's, but we've been doing the whole time. We've literally showed you blatant text, blatant, straight, explicit messages, texts. And what you've done is you've said, well, as a Muslim, how I would try to interpret it to match what I what I think, yeah. so that so that my belief can be true, is this this and this and this, instead of going with what the text actually says. This is what we've been doing for the past hour. But the text isn't one hundred percent specific. It's pretty left open ended. When you when you brought up the verse about how when Muhammad was referencing that I believed in. Abraham and I believed in the Torah. He said I believed in the Torah and the one who yeah. revealed the Torah. Okay, so so yeah, when that when he says that, I believe that he did not say specific the way I'm saying it. Oh, I, I believe that I I believe you're, you're yeah. about to do it again. You're yeah, about yeah. to do it again. Now listen, you're about listen, to reinterpret listen. and twist what the word actually sure. says and now give a a, a okay. an imaginative uh, imaginative so, interpretation. So you're about you're to do it again. Saying. Go ahead. So, so if Muhammad in that verse said, I believe in the Torah in this current present day time as you bring forth me, I wish he would have said that, but he didn't. He just said, I okay, believe. Okay, Ahmed, 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 Ahmed. Wait, so did he, did he have an actual Torah that he put on the judgment seat? Yeah, he did. He had a, okay, he had not Did he the, say that I believed in you, pointing to the Torah that he had, that he just put in the judgment seat? 
Yeah, he said that in that. So verse, what Torah is he talking about? The one in the, the past the, or the one the he one, just put in judgment? The one, seat? the one that wasn't corrupted. That's what I believe he's okay, referring to. Okay, is that is that including the one he put in the judgment seat? Yeah, he put the, what the Jews believe is the Torah. The Jews believe that's the Torah, no, 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 the no, original. No, we're, we're not talking about Jews' belief. We're talking about Muhammad's belief. Muhammad had a Torah, put the Torah in the judgment seat, and said he believed in it. Right? Yeah. Okay, so it's the it's the Torah that exists in his time, presently. I don't think it's too crazy to think that he was referencing to the Torah Beautiful. that was corrupted. Now, now, what I want you to you're going to do it again. Notice so how the, we, okay. you see how but we gave you an explicit. Topic. We gave you an explicit text that says Muhammad currently had a Torah and said that he believed in that current Torah and the one who revealed that Torah. Okay, can but you, you want another? to imagine and say, well, it's not it's not a far stretch to think that he's not talking about the Torah that he literally put in his hands and put in the judgment seat, but maybe something in the past. Like, come on, bro. But that's like the critical foundation that that's Muslims not believe. That's not that's not okay. Critical. Okay, but is it crazy for us Muslims to say we believe the the Bible and the and the gospels corrupted and the yes. the Torah is corrupted? Yes, yes. It, it, we, this we, is why we believe crazy. that, right? Let me tell you why it's crazy. But, but don't we believe it's that? Crazy. Let me tell you why. It's crazy, and here's the entire point of this entire sh uh, our conversation. It's yeah. crazy because none of your scriptures say that. You're making it up. All of you that say that are making it up that's the whole point okay but if we didn't believe that they were corrupted why wouldn't we just follow the angel the gospel exactly. or the torah if we don't believe they were corrupted that's our point so stop sin is corrupted and follow the torah and the gospel okay but if if we believe that it wasn't altered then we would still be following the the angel the gospel and assume that jesus is god right Yep. However, but the main difference between a Muslim and a Christian is that we believe that because the scripts have been altered, that's just our opinion. You believe it's not. That's just our opinion. That's our. I know. I know. I know listen, listen, your opinion is made up. Do you get it? It's not based on any foundation. It's made up. That's the whole point. So, okay, so then if we, if you think it's made up, then how come in the Quran it says when God is speaking to Muhammad and they believe God has begotten a son, Jesus, right? It brings up that we don't believe that God has had a begotten son like Jesus. So that would mean that in the Bible, when they reference that God is Jesus, that is a contradiction. We would assume a contradiction is a corruption. All right. Beautiful point. Okay. Beautiful point. So, and this is where you run into the Islamic dilemma. Okay. This is where the problem of Islam is. Okay. Is that Islam confirms a book that, that it contradicts. It says that the book that it's, it confirms, it's true, it's the word of God, it's revelation, while wow. at the same time, it contradicts what's in that book. So, here's the dilemma. If the Bible, if the gospel is true, then the Quran is false because the Quran contradicts the gospel. If the gospel is false, then the Quran is still false because it says that the Quran is uh, that the gospel is true. So therefore, it's false either way. So if the gospel is true, the Quran is false. If the gospel is false, the Quran is false. It's the Islamic dilemma. Well, we don't necessarily believe 100% of it. We do believe that there's some core things that are correct that translates over to Islam and the Quran. But it's just little, not little, but major things. Like we don't believe in the crucifixion. We do believe that it was made to appear that Jesus was crucified. But we believe that God raised his soul up to heaven and made it look like he was crucified. That's the one thing he that was, we disagree. He was crucified then. Wait, wait, don't go, there. Then. Don't, go, don't sure. go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Stay focused what? on the preservation of the scriptures we have. We just got to the part where we all wanted to get to, the okay. Islamic dilemma. So we're here now. So focus. Okay. So, so you're you're right that the that the Quran again contradicts these things. It contradicts the crucifixion of Jesus. It contradicts the deity of Christ. It contradicts a lot of yeah. the messages of the prophets. It contradicts yeah. a lot of that. Yeah. That proves that the Quran itself is flawed.
because it says that the book, the book that says Jesus was crucified, that Jesus is God, that Jesus yeah. is the son of God, the Quran says that that book is true. So if that book is true, that says the, thing, the Quran is false because it contradicts these things. Now, if the book is false, then the Quran is still false because the Quran says that this false book is true. So either way it goes, it's a double-edged sword. It's the Islamic dilemma. But you're making it seem like just because there's some discrepancy or some different opinions of how the, what actually happened historically, if Jesus was crucified or not, that would make one book illegitimate, not the word of God and the other vice versa. So it doesn't make sense to- No, 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 this is what I'm saying, brother. This is what okay. I'm saying. So the gospel, gospel makes a truth claim that Jesus was crucified, period, okay. right? Okay. The Quran makes it- the Quran makes a truth claim saying Jesus was not crucified. Sure. So yeah. both, both claims cannot be true at the same time. Yeah, one has to be incorrect. Exactly. Now, with the Quran, it says that the gospel is true. It says it's a revelation from God. In the gospel, it says that Jesus was crucified. The Quran contradicts what it says is true. So therefore, the Quran backfires against itself. The Quran is wrong. Go ahead. So you're making the assumption that when they reference that the Injil is correct, you're saying 100% of the parts. What about when they're saying the Injil is correct? We're referencing, oh, believe in one God, don't idol worship, don't commit adultery, don't, you know, steal, commit, the, all that's like, we definitely agree in that, but you're just saying just because it doesn't, it doesn't agree with the whole crucifixion and Jesus is God, that makes it, you know, what if I'm as a Muslim interpreting it that, we believe in the Injil when it talks about don't idol worship, don't commit to all that, all those commandments, not the specifically the crucifixion and Jesus is God part. Yeah, yeah. So the problem with that, bro, is that you cannot pick and choose what part is truer and what part is not, because the Quran does not do that. Matter of fact, the Quran speaks against this. Like, for example, this is chapter two, verse eighty-five. Chapter two of the Quran, verse eighty-five. It says this. Um, and I'm reading like kind of the middle of it because this is the relevant part. Okay. It says, then do you believe in a part of the scripture while yeah. rejecting the rest? Yeah, that's not allowed. You can't do that. Exactly. You, can't, you can't do that. So, yeah. So this is what you just did. It's like, well, can't I just say that I agree with part of the gospel that, re that rejects idol worship, but then reject the other part of the gospel that says Jesus was crucified? The Quran says you can't do that. You can't pick one and then reject the other. I, I agree. I agree. But that's making the assumption that my holy book is correct. But I'm making the claim that your holy book isn't correct. So if I was as a Muslim, I say, you know what? I'll believe in Muhammad and Jesus, but I don't want to believe in Abraham. I don't think he was. That's I can't say that. I can't pick and choose what parts of my holy book is true. I'm saying that there are certain parts in your whole because here's the thing. I'm saying that the the scripture that you have today, that's my claim as a Muslim, isn't the word of God. I feel like it's partially the word of God. So that's why I can say, okay, it's okay to pick and choose because yours not, I'm just trying to show proof of my book is, is basically some parts in your book. So example, like I know, didn't Mo or Jesus fall on his face and make supplication to God and something about making prayer for Abraham? I know as a Muslim, we do that in our prayer and we also fall on our face. But in that, in that same in that same phrase, again, in the very same breath of that verse, yeah. Jesus calls God his father. Okay. So do you believe you believe that part? Well, well here's the thing. Now you're gonna hate this part. When I say when Jesus calls him his father, like we're all children of God, we all came from God, we view him as a higher up, we view him as a deity, as God, like you know, superior. That's just that that's a that's a Christian idea, not an Islamic idea. In the, in Islam, in that's, Islam, a, that's a Christian idea, not an Islamic idea. Hang on, I think I'm echoing. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna bring you down and then come right back up. Okay, come back up. But again, stealing from Christianity to make sense of the Quran. All right. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. So in the Quran, it says that Allah is a father to no one. That you can only come to him as a slave. You can't come to him metaphorically as his yeah. child or anything like that. Yeah. You can only come to him as a slave. 
Yeah. Well, so that's not an Islamic teaching that sure. we are all children of God and we can come to him as a child metaphorically. That's okay. not in Islam. Okay. So that's why I ask again, when you quote the verse where Jesus fell prostrate on his face and yeah. called, prayed to God, his father, yeah. do you believe that? No, I, I, I don't believe he is his father, like actual begotten father, no. Okay, so then you can't quote that verse and say, I believe that this is true. You know what I'm saying? Okay, that, that's so, that's just, yeah, you you're correct. Okay, yeah, you're right. So I'm just referencing about how, you know, how Muslims, we prostrate and we put our heads on. If we were, basically, we Muslims say we follow all all the prophets in their teachings and one of the things that jesus did he fell on his face to pray you know, and what's up how do you know how do you know when you say you follow all the teachings of the prophets yeah how do you know that jesus fell on his face and prayed how do you know that well here's it so yeah because i'm basically making a reference to what your bible says about oh. yeah <laughs> but here's the thing as a muslim we believe that all the prophets delivered the same exact message okay. from throughout so, time Here's, here's something interesting about that, too. Here's something interesting about that. Whenever we look at the prophets and their message, you where do you have to go in order to read what they taught? Where do you have to go? The Quran is what I would use as a, as a message. I know most of the stories are in the Quran. No, they're not. Like, for example, um, Israel is a prophet of God, according to the Quran. Who is Israel? Uh, I'm not. You're going to have to tell me. I don't. I'm assuming is is he's a man. He was a man. That's um Israel is um what's the Arabic name? I'm pretty sure I know the Arabic name. Um Israel. Israel. Yeah, oh my god, yeah, okay, yeah, Israel, yeah. Who is he though? You know what I mean? Who is he? The Quran doesn't tell you. The Quran just mentions him and mentions that he has twelve patriarchs or twelve sons, right? Um, oh uh, yeah, he um he was like right? after the prophet um ja Yaqub, Jacob, Jacob had so yeah. Look, so notice how you just said that Israel came after the prophet Jacob. The fact that you said that, which is not your fault because it's the Quran's fault, it, it's, it's mind boggling because Jacob and Israel are the same person. Okay, Jacob, but we call him Yaqub. Yeah, Jacob. Yeah, Yaqub, yeah. Jacob got his name changed to Israel, and you get this from the Torah, but you wouldn't know that. If you threw out the Torah and just relied on the Quran, you would come up with this thinking that Jacob, Jacob, and Israel are two different people. You need the Torah, bro. You don't well, know anything when, about when the, the Quran. When the Quran talks about the children of Israel, yeah, who? Talking, but who is that? When they say children of Israel, who's Israel? Who is that? That would be the the people that were the from the twelve. Their his twelve kids, right? His twelve yeah, or yeah, what seven. Kids? What kids? Jacob, Jacob had, Yaqub had like 12 kids and then two, two more from another wait, woman. Wait, no. wait, wait, Jacob is not Israel, remember? Jacob and Israel are two different people and they are the children of Israel, not the children of Jacob. What do you mean 12 kids from Jacob? Well, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm interpreting the, the, pro, the story of the prophet because I remember learning something about Jacob had 12 kids from one woman and then two from another. He had Joseph and another kid i don't know if it's the same prophet of the story but like i said i'm not like an expert in okay, my own religion or kush that's okay but my, my point is this bro is that expert in from the quran from the quran you don't know anything about the prophets you don't you don't know what they taught you don't know anything about them you, you'll get these little stories here and there with an islamic twist on it but you do not know them you have to go to the original source to know them do you, you get what i'm saying I hear you. Yeah. So, so the point is, is that now when you go to, and, and when you go and you look at what the prophets taught, right? And you, they all taught one message. They all taught yeah. the same thing basically. And they yeah. were in line. They never, they didn't contradict each other. The prophets taught that God was our heavenly father. They all taught this. Moses taught this in Deuteronomy chapter 14, Exodus chapter three, all over. Moses taught that God is our father. Isaiah taught that God is our father. Malachi, Zechariah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, they all taught that God was our father, all the way to Jesus, teaching that God is our heavenly father. While Muhammad comes later and contradicts this message and this concept of God as our heavenly father. Who should I go with? If all the prophets teach that God is our father, and then I get to this Arabian so-called prophet, who says something the opposite? 
Who's do I go with? I'm trying to give you an answer. I'm trying to think. I mean, you're you're. I guess you're viewing it as, you know, if it contradicts the Bible or the Torah, you shouldn't follow it. But what if you're viewing it as they're coming with a correction, not necessarily a contra. They're just trying to fix so, what has so been that, misunderstood the entirety of the. Of so the, that means. So that would mean that all the prophets. From Abraham all the way to Jesus, Hamashiach, the Messiah, they were all wrong. They were all wrong in understanding that God is our Heavenly Father, and Muhammad is the one who got it right. I believe they all had it right, but over time, man ended up misinterpreting or corrupting or concealing verses and certain based things. Off, based, off super life. Based, based off what? Based, based, based on off just what the, the Quran says. The Quran exactly. tells us that man exactly. would conceal and they would sometimes sell the message of God for some money. And that oh, was here's, wrong. So it was a big here's my sin. question. Again, here's my question. If I see a consistent message, as you said, yeah. that they are consistent. If I see in the text, forget what people teach. If I see in the text, the consistent message that God is our heavenly father. And then I get to the Quran that comes way later and says, no, 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 God is not our heavenly father. You're just his slave. You're just a servant. Yeah. Who do I go with? So I, I would feel like the main message that God, cause you're saying God is the heavenly father through, that's what all the prophets were saying as a message, right? So the one message that really stayed like the biggest crime is associating partners with God and idol worshiping. And I would definitely see that through all the stories throughout all the prophet. And it would make sense to me that God would be upset with the idea that people are thinking that Jesus, who's supposed to be another prophet, like all the other prophets before him, has some divine power and his are is his equal. That that to me would make it sense. Oh, that that's kind of what makes me believe in Islam because I do know how the stories in the Torah and in the Bible, they teach about this stuff. And the major thing is idol worshiping and thinking that there's other people that are superior on the same level as God. So when I see that, oh, a reason for the prophet Muhammad to come down is because these people, they saw Jesus resurrect someone from the dead bro, and cure bro, leprosy and bro, cure blindness. Bro. They would think he's bro. divine in himself. So he bro. has to come and correct it. Bro, who yeah. should I go with? If all the prophets say one thing, Muhammad says another, who should I go with? But you you think the prophets all said worship the heavenly and father that that is God and Jesus is him. That's what you're saying the prophet said, that Jesus was God. If I, I see that the prophet Moses taught that God is our heavenly father, if I see that Joshua, Zechariah, Malachi, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Zephaniah, Haggai, all teach that God is our heavenly father. And then we get to John the Baptist who teaches that God is our heavenly father. And then we finally get to Jesus, the Messiah, the Lord, who says that God is our heavenly father. But then we get to Muhammad who says, no, 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 no. God is not our heavenly father. He's a father to no one. Who do I go with? I don't know how to answer your question because you're making it seem as if your Bible, your Bible is saying what these prophets said is Basically, it's kind of like how I'm saying as a Muslim, oh, I believe that you're saying, well, my my Bible who says all the prophets say that Jesus is going to become God on earth, then it's like, I, how can I tell you not to follow that? Because that's what you're making the claim for it. He be, to become God on earth when he was, he never ceased to be God. That doesn't make sense. He came and took on flesh, being fully man, fully God. So uh, um, I think I think I'll put it into an easier um, easier question. Maybe you're not understanding what Avery is given. Um, let's say you go to court, okay, and they call call you to jury duty, okay, yeah. and you have maybe ten witnesses come up, and they yeah. say person A um, uh, uh, stole from person B. Ten people, and then yeah. one person comes up and says person A did not steal from person B. Will you trust the 10 over the one or will you trust the one over the 10? I mean, I would like to think that 10 people are gonna be honest versus all of them are gonna lie. But I mean, I'd hope to know that they're not affiliated with, that's just me making, trying to rationalize. But no, I would assume no, no, most no, no, no. Of Realistically, people, yes yeah. or no, would you trust yeah, 10, 10 people, If 10 people made claims, then yeah, I feel like I would personally believe those 10 people over one person. I okay, feel good. like that makes sense. So that means, that means you should trust all the prophets within the Bible who claim very clearly 
that Jesus, okay, first of all, many people claim that Jesus is God, but you should trust them in the point that Avery was making that God is our father over the one prophet, Muhammad, who claims that he isn't. The difference is that they all received revelation from God and Muhammad didn't receive revelation directly from God. He received it from an angel. So there's the issue that all the other prophets in Islam received the revelation directly from Allah, but Muhammad did not receive it directly from Muhammad and um, from Allah. He received it from Jibreel. So there's that's the issue as well. That's another issue. So, but if he was making the argument of being consistent, what if I were to make the argument that, well, none of the prophets before Jesus claimed to be God and now Muhammad isn't, it would be a different story if Muhammad came and said, no, 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 Jesus isn't God, I am God, but he didn't. He maintained the same story that all the other prophets, we are just messengers of God. We don't have any divine power, except Beautiful why, would Jesus, be, now, why would Jesus be the exception, right? Muhammad, if he was truly a, a, a guy that's trying to deceive someone, he would have the story, hey, look, all the other prophets said that I was coming and that I'm going to be the one with divine power. He could have tried and defame Jesus and say, no, 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 Jesus isn't the son of God. I am the son of God. Why wouldn't he make that argument if he was truly trying to deceive people? Yet he wanted to maintain the same story about all the other. Listen, I'm no different than Adam, Moses, Abraham. I'm just a messenger of God. No, no, no. He does put himself above Jesus in his story where he goes up to visit Allah and stuff like that. He exceeds above Moses. He exceeds above Abraham and he exceeds above Jesus in that story. Also in the Hadith Sahih Muslim 193 E is where um, the people will come to the different prophets to see if they can intercede on their behalf. They'll go to Abraham. Abraham says, no, I'm not fit. This is all according to Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, no, I know that story. Yeah, I know. And so, he will be the last one to right. forgive Muhammad, everyone and let them all in because we are of his Muhammad, own. Right, so Muhammad will be the only one who's worthy uh, 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 above Jesus, above Moses, above Abraham to intercede on the behalf of believers. He'll be the only one who's worthy. Jesus is not worthy. Nobody else is worthy except Muhammad, who Jesus being the spirit of Allah and the word of Allah and the sinless one among them is not worthy for some reason, makes no sense. But Muhammad clearly puts himself above Jesus in his hadiths, in his stories. He does it all the time. Now, which is the deception. Now you ask the question, what, 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 well, you know, we're talking about consistency, then Jesus wouldn't claim to be God because none of the prophets claim to be God. Ah, ah, ah. The prophets said that the Messiah is God. The prophets told us this. The prophets told us that the Messiah coming is God who will come in the flesh. And Jesus claimed to be that fulfillment, that Messiah who is God who will come in the flesh. None of the prophets claimed that about themselves. They said the one who's coming is that, right? Malachi said it, that Yahweh is coming, who John the Baptist will prepare the way for. That's Jesus. Isaiah said it, I showed you earlier, right? The son to be born, who is the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. They say, Isaiah says, the Messiah to come is God in the flesh. You have all of these prophets, Zechariah, Yahweh says that the, the Israelites will look on me whom they pierced, whom they pierced. Yahweh, God of heaven says that Israel pierced him and they will see him and wail and cry like, oh my gosh, we're guilty. Who, when did, when did Yahweh get pierced? When he was on the cross, when he was on the cross. So all the, the prophets gradually, not in full context, but gradually give glimpses of this revelation that the Messiah to come is God in the flesh and Jesus claimed that for himself. A consistent message still. While Muhammad comes later and says, no, 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 no. The Messiah is nothing but a messenger. That's it. Do you believe the story of God saving like Abraham from the fires? Is, I don't know if that's the same in your religion. Okay, so... Okay, so yeah, that's an hour, but doesn't it like kind of make you question why would God allow himself to be crucified and tortured and basically ridiculed? Like, doesn't that like kind of contradict someone being an all powerful being? Like, doesn't that kind of make you consider why would he save all his other prophets from, you know, these he adversaries? Didn't. He didn't. Not, not, not even in the Quran does it say that he saved his prophets. It literally says that they killed the prophets of Allah. It's the Jews killed them. Yeah. So, so, so even according to the Quran, Allah did not save all of his prophets.
Well, what, what about the story of in the Quran when Abraham was saved from the fire when the idol worshippers basically tied him to, I think it was like a palm tree. He saved Abraham. Yeah. Why and then, he, and but, then, but, but, but wait, why didn't he ignore. save Muhammad? Yeah, don't it. Why didn't he save Muhammad? Don't it. Well, you know, you know, God logic, you know, the verse where Muhammad says, for I do not know what will happen with me or what will happen with you. Yeah. So what? So so he couldn't even save Muhammad. They don't even. They, there was always bloodshed. So yeah, what's the then, um, the Ahmed, Yosef, I just want to ask you something. The well, that story was the angel Gabriel basically be killed and murdered. Look, I honestly I don't know one hundred percent. All I know is most of the stories about the prophets the being Quran saved. Says, the Quran says yes, bro. The Quran says which, that they which, killed which prophet, their, their prophets. Which of the twenty-five prophets. The main twenty-five we, I, prophets. I I don't know all. It doesn't name them. It doesn't specify who, but it says that there are multiple prophets that Israel, the Israelites, killed. Allah allowed that to happen. So he doesn't Allah always save his prophets from death. From the killed. twenty-five main prophets that are mentioned in Islam, I don't know any of them being killed, murdered, and in some type of way. I don't know about that. The Quran doesn't say that these are main the main prophets. It doesn't say that. Matter of fact, the the Quran says. We make no distinction among the messengers, among the prophets. So there's no distinction. There's no main prophets. There's no lesser. Isa was the only one to be raised into Jannah. Okay, but then what was, I don't think I remember your answer for the idea of God being crucified, you know, allowing himself to be, you know, treated like that and abused and tortured. Why does that, why does that seem logical for you? Well, it's very, very simple because one, God is just and holy, and he's also merciful. And so this, the, the wages, the payment, the cost of sin, according to God's law, is death and eternal separation from him. This wrath would fall on all of us because we're guilty. We can't just say, sorry, God, I for please forgive me and really mean it. And he just let us go. That would mean that he's he can show some mercy, but that wouldn't be just. He's just letting sin and crime just, you know, slide off. That's not God. He's holy and just perfectly. So in order for him to be just fully, he has to punish the sin. But he's also merciful in that he wants to give us grace and let us go. So what does he do? He takes on the punishment himself. He comes down, takes on human flesh as our representative, and then takes on his own wrath, takes on, his own, takes on the punishment that we deserve for our sake so that sin is punished and dealt with but also now grace and mercy is given out in abundance so it's only in christ logically that god is both just and merciful at the same time as opposed to in islam you have god you have allah who is merciful because he can just forgive you even if you just ask and you're you really mean it he can just forgive you without punishing the sin so he's merciful but he's not just so there's a lack there but in Christianity, God is both just and merciful at the same time in the person of Christ Jesus. Well, Amen. What if we're I want to quickly add on to that point very quickly, Ahmed, if that's okay. Yeah. That's um, so one way I like to, to explain it to people who, who, who obviously need to get a grasp of what, 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 what the crucifixion meant and everything. Think of it this way. You have a, let's say you have a $10,000 fine for whatever it is. You know, um, uh, you stole whatever, you know, you, you did something. You've got a $10,000 fine, you go to court, and you have absolutely no way of paying for it. You don't have any money, you don't have any possessions that you can give. You've got nothing. <clears throat> all you've got is the clothes on your back, and that's all you got. Now, a fair judge is sitting in front of you, a just judge, who will judge everything 100% righteously, no matter who it is, no matter there's family, friends, uh, 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 you know, somebody uh, elderly, no matter who it is, he will judge fairly, 100%. Now that judge is gonna have to say, you're guilty, dude, and you gotta, you gotta pay, you gotta pay somehow, so he's gonna send you to jail. But actually, because that judge loves you so much, right after he ruled you guilty, he paid the $10,000 fine. And that's what you've got to replace now with Jesus. Jesus is that judge and you're the person with the $10,000 fine. But the $10,000 fine is your sin. Now you've got that sin and Jesus judges you guilty. But he says, you know what? Because I love you so much, 
I will pay the fine for your sin. In Islam, you don't have it this way. In Islam, you have will send Christians and Jews to hell instead of Muslims. So the, so the Christians and Jews will pay for the sins of the Muslims. That's what you have in uh, Islam. But in Christianity, what you have is the love of God who was so gracious and merciful that he paid the fine for you himself. And he didn't put it on anybody else. Nobody else. He himself, not, 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 not you, not me, not anybody else will pay the, for the sins of anybody, any one other person except our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who came and died for your sins, my sins, and everybody else's sins, as long as you accept him and you have faith in him and you follow him to the end of days. And, 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 and we're saved by grace through faith, and faith comes good works. You know, that's being a follower of Christ. But you need to have an understanding that even if you are a Muslim, you know, your good deeds don't outweigh your bad deeds. So, you know, Allah, Allah will st still send another Muslim to hell, but the Muslim has a chance of getting out of Jahannam. But one, but one who isn't, you know, who one who isn't a Muslim will be there for forever, for eternity. So that doesn't make sense. As why do Muslims, why are Muslims sent to hell? What if they do the five pillars? They, you know, they say their shahada. You know, they they let's say they answer the three the three questions from the angels. You know, when you die, Ahmed, and you go into the you go into the ground, into the grave, and then the three the angels ask you the three questions. Why, why, I'm why, sorry, why, even if a Muslim answers that correctly, one will still, one will still actually go to Jahannam. Where, where's your salvation? Who is your salvation? What, what's the salvation relying on Allah's mercy? Allah's mercy isn't enough for you because you as a Muslim will still enter Jahannam. And you know what the, you know what the issue is? That Muslims are okay with knowing that they will spend time in Jahannam as long as they get out and they go to Jannah. But no one is guaranteed Jannah. So can I, are you, are you done? Can I respond or? Go on. So... Well, back to the when you're making the claim about being just and, you know, taking the burden for all the sins. I mean, what's the argument if someone were to say, well, what's just about making someone else pay for all the sins that people have committed? Like, does that seem really fair? To the issue is to one of your own profits? Hold on really quickly. I haven't spoken yet. Uh, but the issue is you're making it seem like or you're making it sound like will to do that thing. No, the person on the cross or God, right? He did it willingly. He didn't do it while being forced to do it. Christ wasn't forced into doing it. He willingly chose to die on the cross. So it's not, it's not being made happen in the sense that, you know, it's like, oh, you have to do this. No, he chose to do it. Like he wanted to do it to save you. I see. Well, I mean, when I think of the version that the Quran teaches, they say they made it appear as if he was crucified, the prophet. And to me, that just seems like, I don't know, it seems like a little bit more merciful where God makes it seem like the Jews are crucifying Jesus and they're getting their way and they're teaching the son of God a lesson, you know, or like a, a messenger of God. That kind of, to me, makes it seem like that's something God, that's me speaking on God's behalf. That just kind of, another reason why I believe Let's see if this is merciful. So you mean to tell me that you believe, for example, what is the reason why I today or anyone believes that Jesus was crucified in the first place, according to according to your worldview? Oh, well, I, because I believe from the eyewitnesses of the people that authored the Bible, like John, Paul and no, like, anyone. Why, why does why does anyone why does anyone believe that Jesus was crucified in the first place, according to the Quran. Uh, because they saw someone raised up on a cross and they had to like carry their cross throughout Jerusalem. And it was a whole, it's a big event. Like it's a big thing that happened that everyone. Who did everyone think that they saw? They saw, they saw the, the prophet Jesus made it appear as if it was the prophet Jesus. So from what I'm understanding, God took his soul up to heaven and made it appear as if they crucified. So everyone back at the time, they truly believed that, yeah, we just killed the son of God. We just killed a messenger of God. Right. That's what everybody, so Allah deceived? everybody that saw, hold on. So everybody that saw this, the disbelievers, they thought that they killed Jesus. Yeah. Even the believers of Jesus thought that Jesus had was killed on the cross. And so everyone thought that Jesus was crucified because Allah made it 
look like it, right? Yes, that's okay. what I believe. So for 600 years, people was believing that Jesus was crucified and even some of his followers believed when they saw him again, they believed that they saw him alive again. So they went on preaching that Jesus rose again from the dead. We saw him die and we saw him again alive. So he resurrected like he said he would. So Jesus is alive, guys. He, he rose from the dead. <laughs> I just understood that. Bro. <laughs> so the reason why they believe this is because Allah tricked them into believing that Jesus died in the first place, right? What was your, uh, can you rephrase your question again? So the reason why the followers of Jesus, for example, when they thought that they saw Jesus alive, they went on preaching for years that Jesus, they, they, they had appearances that they saw Jesus risen from the dead because they thought that they saw Jesus dead. So then when they saw him alive again, they're like, oh, look, everyone, he's the Messiah who rose from the dead. He was dead, but now we see him alive. So the only reason why they think that he resurrected when they saw him again was because Allah made them think that he died in the first place, right? Yeah, and from my understanding, it's that they believe that when Jesus was, when when they took him down from the car, they put him in a tomb and they basically blocked it off. And then what was it, three days later, the tomb was empty. So yes. I don't I don't think that that story is in the Quran, but that could make sense why a Christian at the time, a follower of the Jesus would, would make that claim that, oh my God, yeah. he's God, he's he has risen. Yeah. Right. So now, so now this, this narrative that Jesus rose from the dead really starts with Allah for making it seem like Jesus died in the first place, right? Okay, yeah, I could see how that makes sense, yeah. Okay, and so now people for 600 years have been preaching and spreading this message that Jesus died on the cross and rose again on the third day, all because Allah tricked them into believing this. Okay, yeah. Is, is, that, is that merciful? Merciful against who? Is that merciful to trick someone into believing a falsehood and then letting this falsehood spread for 600 years? Is that merciful? Mm, well, I don't I don't see how protecting like a prophet is a not merciful to to make people people that. are allowed to believe what they want, you know, like so. Not, not, not yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. I definitely see what you mean. How it may, it's you can't blame the people for believing that. Look, this guy was in a cave at one point and then he magically disappeared. I like that's got to be some divine intervention right there. Does that mean he just magically disappeared himself? He must be God. That's I I wouldn't doubt for someone at the time to think that. Okay. Tr try to remember what the teachings of Jesus were. Was that he does not associate with partners and there is only one God. That's what the Quran teaches me. So if I- No, no stay focused. Yeah. Stay focused. I'm asking, is it merciful to trick people into believing something and letting them spread this false message and tricking other people to believe it for 600 years? Is that merciful? Um, well, I don't blame people for doing what they do because that's the whole point of free will. Like it's. I mean, if God wants to snap his fingers and make everyone subordinate and believe the original word without having the need to send, he could do that, but then that would defeat the point of free will and people. You that's know, not the, that's not the question. Like, well, no, he asked me if it was merciful and I feel, are you trying to refer no, to as merciful Allah, as being Basically, like Allah, in short terms, Allah deceived people thinking that Jesus died on the cross. He made it seem that he did that, yeah. that Jesus died on the cross. And then yeah. people believe that. So Allah and, deceives people. Do you think that more is right by terms, God to deceive people? Right. In even more simpler terms, you could say that Allah is the cause for is the cause of Christianity. He started this. When you say Allah, I don't think he understands. Not that, I don't think he understands. Oh, no, yeah. So when you say Allah is the cause of Christianity, as a Muslim, I'm supposed to believe that the Christianity that Jesus was preaching 
was just simply about following and worshiping one God and not associated with partners. What, what is the message of Christianity today, man? What, what has it been historically? What, what has been the main message? From, from me, what I understand the message of Christianity was that Jesus is God and the Son of God and the Trinity and the crucifixion was him dying for your sins. He died for our sins, right? That's, okay. that's what I believe that the Christians now believe. All right, beautiful. And that's what they've taught for 2,000 years. Now, when you go this, we go to the to the very root of this. Who started this belief that Jesus died by crucifixion? Who started it? Uh, I guess the people of his time. According to the Quran, who started the belief that Jesus died on the cross? It would be everyone. So it wouldn't also the the Jews and the people at the time, his followers, were the ones that claimed that they crucified him, and then his Ooh, followers. Why, at the why, time. Are, why are they claiming that they crucified Jesus? Why are they claiming that? Because they saw his body up on a cross, and they and who and who made it look like it was Jesus? God. Okay, so God is the one. Allah yeah. is the one who started this idea that Jesus died by crucifixion. Correct. Yeah, that could definitely be one of the reason why everyone believes that, you know, this whole started right there. Yeah, exactly. It all started with Allah. So now Allah started this lie that Jesus died on the cross and allowed believers in Jesus to be, to spread this message that Jesus died by crucifixion for our sins and rose again on the third day. And so now this false message has been preached for 600 years has gotten other people, has gotten many billions of people to believe this, that Jesus died by crucifixion and rose again for our sins. And it's all because Allah started this trick. Is that merciful? And when you mean merciful, you're referring to as just, merciful and just are the same thing? Well, well, uh, will, I, will I go to heaven believing that Jesus was crucified for my sins and rose again on the third day. Will I make it into heaven believing that? So from my understanding of the Quran, they say if you have not been delivered the message in a clear way and you truly believe it, then only God will know. I've, 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 been, delivered the, I've been delivered the Quran and I'm like, wait, no. Jesus actually was crucified. Uh, like this, this is a, a, this is a well-known fact and he, ro he died and rose for my sins. Like this is known. So, so I is do believe, that merciful? Yeah. Well, the way you're interpreting it, you think like you will go to hell for believing that even though God made it seem like so. I do remember that argument that you brought up. Someone mentioned it, that verse is specifically towards the people who know it to be true. Basically, like if you saw a person come down and basically took you back in time and you saw for each word like all these prophets doing all these miracles and you saw and yet you still chose to disbelieve those are the people who would go to hell not someone who is you know on debate like off topic because i'm sure you wholeheartedly believe that your religion married, is bro. what why are you dragging in i answering the question bro it's it's not it's not hard no you said would you go to hell if you don't if very, you believe that he just was crucified very simple is it merciful for Allah to trick people for 600 years to believe that Jesus was crucified and rose again on the third day and start a religion off of that. Is that something wanna, merciful? I want to add one more thing. Just remember the fact that it was somebody, there was actually somebody on that cross. So is it actually um, merciful as well? The fact that Allah decided to crucify some random guy who isn't Jesus for the things that Jesus did. And on top of that, on the back of that, also start a religion which will send people to hell according to the hadith which say that christians will go to hell for this uh, for the sins of muslims is that merciful so with the first question i would want to answer when you said is it is it not, it's not merciful to put a random guy up on the cross and basically suffer so all it says in the quran was that it was made to appear that someone well, was on somebody the went up there who went listen. up there somebody was on I'm there sure, listen i'm sure someone was actually because every even the jews believe they they killed jesus so i'm sure there was but an they actual had different physical teachings there is in that time the, the, yes the tafsir in that time of the us. prophet there were different sure. teachings the tafsir tells us that there was somebody on that cross Sure. who was a uh, 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 quote-unquote look-alike to Isa, which is made to look like that by Allah. 
Well, sure, yeah. I'm sure there was an actual person that people got to see bleed and suffer. Yes, and why? But what was the but, reason as to why that person was on, was crucified? But you're you're making the assumption so in Islam, that, that they were person, doing crucif they, were, they were crucifying people in Islam. No, you're making the assumption that no, that because the tafsir says it. That's that what we're trying to a, say. That there was a soul inside that that body that was on the cross. So what was it then? A well, time. Quran says that God took Jesus' soul up into heaven and made it okay, appear. Okay, but it was, appear. Somebody it, it was somebody but you're, but you're, else. It was somebody else. You're, you're making the assumption that, that, that there was an actual soul in this body that was being taken. Who if, was well, it then? I, if it was right, a, right, it was it a enough, human I, or not? I, I had enough. I had enough. I had so, enough. I had, I had enough. I had enough. We're gonna um we're gonna bring someone else up. up. Um, I appreciate I the conversation. Uh, sure. Ahmed, I appreciate it. Uh, right, please man. come back for another one. Sure. Take uh, care, man. All right. Take care.